It is 731 p.m. on Tuesday, November 28th, 2023. Good evening. My name is Christian Klein. I'm the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm calling this meeting of the board to order. I'd like to confirm all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, on behalf of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Roger DuPont. Here. Patrick Hanlon. Here. Ben Kett Hulley. Here. Dan Riccardelli. Here. Uh, and Mr. Chair, did, did you let yeah. everyone in? Because there's just the. Oh, my question. gosh. Thank you. No all right. They're coming. That was a dry run. We'll do this all over again. It'll, be, it'll sound so professional this time. Okay, well, good evening, everyone. It is 7.32 p.m. It is Tuesday, November 28th. Good evening. My name is Christian Klein. I am the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals, and I'm calling this meeting of the board to order. I'd like to confirm all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Roger DuPont. Here. Patrick Hanlon. Here. Ben Cahalli. Here. Daniel Riccadelli. Here. Elaine Hoffman. Here. And Adam Blank. Here. Good to have all of you here. Uh, on behalf of the town, we have Colleen Ralston, the zoning assistant. Here. And Michael Cunningham, the town council. Here. To have you both with us. Uh, appearing for docket 3764, 212 Pleasant Street. Um, we have Nellie Aikenhead. Here. Good to have you with us. Um, I do not believe we will have anyone present on behalf of 4446th Amston Street, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, and then uh, docket 3775, 54 Mary Street. Uh, we have Manish Gupta. Hi, here. Good to have you with us. So this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely, consistent with an act making appropriations for the fiscal year 2023 to provide for supplementing certain existing appropriations and for certain other activities and projects signed into law on March 29th, 2023. This act includes an extension until March 31st, 2025, the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Public bodies may continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present as at a meeting location, so long as they provide adequate alternative access to remote meetings. Public bodies may meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference. Others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name, or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you please to maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials have been provided. Members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. Public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. And as chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. As the board will be taking up new business at this meeting, as chair, I make the following land acknowledgement. <laughs> Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts, discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotomy, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges that the Town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. So moving on to Item two on our agenda. Uh, this is the first of our administrative items. These items relate to the operation of the board and as such will generally be conducted without input from the general public. Board will not take up any new business on any prior hearings, nor will there be the introduction of any information on matters previously brought before the board. So what we have before us is the written decision for docket 3770, 4042 Dorothy Road. 
This was a decision from our uh, prior hearing on November 14th. Uh, we had the uh, decision was written by Mr. Hanlon, distributed to the board for questions and comments. And um, a final draft was issued this afternoon. Are there any additional uh, comments on the written decision for 4042 Dorothy Road? Seeing none, I will take a motion to approve the written decision for 4042 Dorothy Road. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. So moved. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. This is a roll call vote of the board to approve the written decision 4042 Dorothy Road. Uh, Roger DuPont. Aye. Patrick Hanlon. Aye. Ben Kett Holly. Aye. Daniel Riccadelli. Aye. And the chair votes aye. That written decision is approved. That brings to an end the administrative items on today's agenda. So before opening the public hearings, here are some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce themselves or themselves and make their presentation to the board, then request that members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. And after the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting for public comment. At the conclusion of public comment, the board will deliberate and vote on the matter. Any vote taken at this hearing will be preliminary until the written decision is approved by the board at a subsequent meeting. All votes will be conducted by a roll call vote. So with that, move to item three on our agenda, which is docket 377-244-46 Amsden Street, uh, an appeal of the, the decision of the building inspector. So this item um, has been withdrawn at the request of the applicant. Um, essentially what happened, this was a, an appeal of an issuance of a building permit. Uh, the person who filed for the building permit has asked that the building permit be rescinded and the permit has been returned. And therefore there is no decision of the building inspector that requires an appeal. So at this stage, um, there is no matter before the board on this item, but I think the board should um, vote to accept the withdrawal of the appeal just so that we have it closed out in our records. So the chair would like a motion to accept the withdrawal of the appeal of the decision of the building inspector in regards to 4446 Amsden Street. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Uh, so moved. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think Mr. Cunningham has a point to make. Ah, thank you, Mr. Cunningham. Mr. Chair, thank you, Michael Cunningham, Town Council. I think the chair explained it very well. However, since this is a public hearing, I guess you could offer the uh, public an opportunity to ask any questions that might exist. I don't think there would be, but just for the sake of completeness, uh, that could be offered. Thank you. Um, is the, are there any members of the public who are here um, on this on the item uh, for 4446 Ampton Street who would wish to address the board? Seeing none, I will go ahead and close public comment on this hearing. Um, the motion was uh, forwarded by uh, Mr. Hanlon. Do I have a second for the board? That was second. Mr. DuPont. Yep. Thank you. So it's a roll call vote of the board on a motion to accept the withdrawal of the appeal of the decision of the building inspector in regards to 4446 Amston Street. Um, it's a roll call vote of the board. Uh, Roger DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. So that motion is accepted. That brings us to item four on our agenda. Uh, which is docket 3764, 212 Pleasant Street. This is a continuation of a prior um, a hearing that was opened at prior meetings. And at the conclusion of the last meeting, the board had requested that the applicants um, try to work again with the neighbors on coming up with some, um, some solutions to some of the, the issues that were between them uh, to issue revised drawings um, that clarified the ex sort of the the boundary of the existing house and the expand the proposed um, additions onto the house, and then to include a site plan that covered all the different uh, parts of the project, including parking um, and retaining walls. So those materials have been um, received, and those were on the posted to the agenda. And with that, I will ask Ms. Aikenhead if she can. Um, 
explain what has uh, taken place in the last two weeks. Okay, sure. Should I share my screen? That would be great. Uh, Colleen, if you could go ahead and give her permission for that. You are off. That. Thank you. Can you see? Yes, we can. Sorry, that's not the page I want. Okay, so, um, hang on a second, let me just, <laughs> just gonna clear off my screen here. Can you see the whole picture? Much? Yes, we can. Okay, so basically at our last hearing, the ZBA did request that we show the size of the existing house in comparison to the size of the uh, proposed home. This is the view that is the front of the house. It faces 214 Pleasant Street. This is the uh, existing roof line right here. This is the proposed roof line over the existing house. This is the proposed roof line over the addition. And this is a, a slanted uh, gable roof. These are flat roofs with a flat facade. This is a gable roof that slants towards the front of the house. It's over the existing house also. This is the maximum allowable roof height by right of a third, store, third floor half story, 35 feet. We did, we did two sides, we did the two sides that are closest to the neighbors. This is the side on the left of the house that faces 210 Pleasant Street. This is the existing roof line. This is the proposed roof line over the existing house. And this is the proposed roof line over the addition. This is the maximum allowable 35 feet over a two and a half story home. We did speak to the neighbors about uh, 214 Pleasant Street about what we could do possibly to make this better for them. We did say that we could talk to our architect and the Historic District Commission about lowering this roof line a foot to a foot and a half, so it would be more like around here. We did discuss some other options of having hip roofs or gable roofs. I have drawings and diagrams that I can share, but I will let you guys can let me know if you want to see all that. We didn't come to any agreement on that. At the last hearing, the ZBA also requested and the neighbors requested that we show the location of the existing and proposed parking, the retaining wall and steps to the pond and the house more precisely. So this is our initial rendering, sort of informal in the interest of time, showing these various areas. The existing parking or paved area, I should say, we agreed to delineate into three different sections, which is parking, footpath easement on our land for 216 Pleasant Street and a roadway easement on 218 land for our benefit. We are proposing to add this in terms of parking and this in terms of a little bit more maneuverability space. We subsequently received, we put, we put this out early. We wanted to meet the deadlines and give the information to the ZBA and the neighbors prior to Thanksgiving. So we put this out early. We subsequently received the architect's plan, which is very similar to our plan. It basically shows, again, the roadway easement, the footpath easement, both of which are driveway maneuverability spaces, our parking. The, this plan adds on the steps that were requested to be shown on a, uh, an elevation plan by the neighbors in the ZBA. These steps are slightly different than the ones that were in the initial um, architectural renderings. Since our last hearing, we had, we thought, productive and informative meetings with 218 and 2114 Pleasant, and we invested a significant amount of time and thought in supplying information and answering questions. So we were both surprised and disappointed to receive three to 10 page letters from 214, 216, and 218 that again misrepresent, misrepresent our intent and conversations, twist recent edits that were made at the request of the abutters into quote unquote inconsistencies and factual errors and attempt to disparage our relationships, our, our reputations, mine in particular. For example, these steps at the side of the house, we were asked by the neighbors and the ZBA to map these out on the survey more precisely. We were also asked 
to prepare this superimposed rendering. We prepare this first because we're in charge of our own time and we're not in charge of the architect and it has the old steps. The architect sub subsequently reduced the steps from three to one and pulled them back off the easement. This was at the request of and to benefit the neighbors and it's now touted as an inconsistency in our submissions. The parking area is similar. The June 2022 notice of intent showed our entire parking area our entire paved area as parking. Now that the neighbors have vocalized their concerns about the easement and us not parking on them, we have voluntarily delineated these sections of the easements and agreed to park only here. Obviously, our parking measurements have changed because of that. It's not an inconsistency, it's a response to neighbor requests. There are many other re representations in these letters that are similar to this. I don't want to rehash them all, but I'm happy to answer any questions the board might have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, and so just a so board is I had had, a, I, when I had initially received this, I had reached out to the applicant because um, I had just wanted to clarify the extent of the parking. Um, there is a small wedge between the existing parking and the adjacent property, which on this plan is to the right. Um, and in the bylaws, there's required to be uh, an area of vegetated buffer between parking in a side yard and um, the adjacent neighbor. And so I just wanted to uh, bring that to their attention to make sure that, that they understood that that was a part of the bylaws. And so, um, Ms. Aiken had it indicated that they that that portion of the parking area that is currently not paved would remain unpaved. Um, Correct. With that, I would ask if there are members of the board who have questions on this on our new information. Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Daly, oh. Dave, Rick Daly, you go. The, the, Rick Daly. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I was just wondering if uh, I could ask the applicant if if you know you know the approximate dimensions with the additional paved area uh, in the the light blue here of the of the parking maybe just the width. Uh, I know that there was a comment from the last um, the last hearing that uh, there was a concern about getting two cars in there. So I was just wondering if you could provide. It doesn't have to be exact, but that rough dimension. Okay, so I believe I, I wrote it out up here. The current is 20. This is, doesn't include the easement, but just the parking area. Yep. 20 wide by 15 deep, and we're proposing about a uh, two-foot increase. Okay. And a two-foot in depth, which is towards our house, not towards the easement. Understood. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Riccardelli. Uh, Mr. Hanlon? Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, the uh, this is for, uh, I wondered if, if Ms. Aiken had, can, can comment on this. I'm gonna go back to the standard that we have to apply here because since it's a large addition, the rules are not exactly the same as they are uh, for most other special permits. And in particular, the finding that we are going to have to make is whether this alteration or addition is in harmony with other structures and uses of the vicinity. Uh, and this is after some lead in, which emphasizes the importance of paying attention to the dimensions with other abutters. And it's really an extra burden that people who wish to put a, an addition on uh, have to to bear uh, in order to sort of respect the acquired rights or the existing situation with respect uh, to others. Uh, and the value that is particular here that is different from any other is that we're not talking strictly about the neighborhood here. We're talking about uh, harmony with other structures that um, are nearby. And we're also not talking about whether the pluses outweigh the minuses. We're talking about whether, just as an initial matter, whether we can make a finding that the uh, building is in harmony with the uh, abutting buildings. 
And I, so on that inquiry, a lot of the things that are really good about this application, the net zero, the solar, all of the environmental advantages through the proceedings through CONCOM um, are pretty relevant if you get it to applying 3.3.3, but are less relevant to deciding whether or not uh, you have a harmonious relationship between this and the abutting structures. And I would like Ms. Aiken to, to take the best shot she can at articulating what the basis would be for us to find um, that this building as proposed is in harmony with the abutting structures. So, I'm going down here a little bit. I have these aerial views. I think the building is very much in harmony, equal to and smaller than some immediate abutters. So this is our house. This is 210, which is two stories, we are one. This is 214, and this is 218. There's This is under the deck is built out. This under the deck is built out. So I have the figures. I'd have to get through my um, files to pull them up for you, but I feel like we're equal to or smaller than any one of these houses. And if you look at the, I had to do this for the Historic District Commission. If you look at the waterfront homes from Route 2 to the other end of Pleasant Street, where the uh, district stops, we are very much in the smallest, as proposed, compared to all of those. I have the data. I can pull it up and show it to you or send it to you. I don't have it right here right now on my screen. I do have that picture. Mm -hmm. This is. I guess another, this is oh, another one showing the parking. We have a full set of aerial views of everything. This is our house. It's smaller than this, one story versus two. This is our house, smaller than this, one story versus two. This is our house. It's smaller than this. This is two and a half, and this is probably one, and this is maybe a lower level. So I um, did. As proposed, I, I as was proposed. under the, as proposed, you're not one story, are you? No, no. And I, th I think the, the issue is why, it, how it is that if you, if you build what you're asking to build, how that is in harmony and not just in general to the a neighborhood really, but other structures and uses in the vicinity. Okay. And so, so, so is it your claim that you are basically, you're basically doubling the square footage, not quite uh on the house and you're increasing the height somewhat although not as not up to 35 feet and i guess the question i have that the neighbors are all obviously saying this is not in harmony and i'm trying to figure out what the case is for right. saying why why it is and again when we get to 3.3.3 .3, we can talk all about what the how big houses are on spy pond generally but this inquiry is much more is attended to whatever we think is the, are the structures and uses in the vicinity, which sort of this little this little pocket here. Okay, so I, again, I'll get my act, absolute figures. I'm just looking right now at aerial views. If you look at this double double in height, which would be the same as any of these, so the same footprint doubled in height, and add in the square. To me, visually, it looks like it's still significantly smaller than this. No bigger than this and smaller than this, but I, I'd have to get back to you with the data because I don't have it right here. But just visually, we're going to have a square this big, two stories. This is a two and a half story. This is a two and a half story. This is a two story. Is that is that basically? And then, uh, actually, I don't have this area handy either. But up here at the top, there's a three and a half story house that's significantly bigger than any of these homes. That's 216 present. I'm, 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 if, is there anything else that you'd like to add to, to this? I mean, I'm well, just... if, if there's some, another conversation going on, I'll try and get some concrete data to to add. Well, I expect it'll be a longish hearing, so 
<laughs> we'll see. But if we take action tonight, I mean, this is this is an issue that I will expect everyone to uh, address because it's it's the determination that is the hardest one for us to make. I think in okay. in uh, in this case, and and it's again not the same as the determination we make in every case. Is there anything further, Mr. Hanlon? No, there's not. Thank you. Um, are there other questions from members of the board? I'm seeing none. <clears throat> so I will now be opening uh, the meeting for public comment. Uh, public questions and comments will be taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing our decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the reactions tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone may dial star nine to indicate they would like to speak. You'll be called upon by the chair. You'll be asked to give your name and address. You'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. For anyone wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing, the chair will allow those wishing to speak for the first time to be called upon first. Once all public questions and comments have been addressed or the allocated time has ended, the public comment period will be closed and board and staff will do our best to show documents being discussed. Um, so it's 8 p.m. Um, I'd like to wrap up the public comment by um, sometime between 8.30 and 8.45, but we'll leave that a little flexible for right now. Um, <clears throat> so with that, are there any members of the public who wish to address the board? Um, we have Ms. Isaac has raised her hand. You can go ahead and unmute yourself and Hi, address uh, the board. Hi, I'm Isaac from 218 Pleasant Street. Uh, so my letter actually um, pretty much cover everything I want to say. But one thing I do want to point out is uh, despite multiple emails and uh, even face-to-face -face meeting, uh, we keep telling 218 that our property shouldn't be including in the permit application, but it's still including. And the layer easement is not overpowered as a property owner. We actually just learned that our property was included in the application I, uh, on November 17, which is the meeting I uh, proactively uh, uh, proposed. Um, before that, she was guaranteed to me on an email like my property was not including inside any application. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and then just now, the picture she showed, uh, yes, she have an easement over there, and uh, her easement is only for passing and repassing. Our lawyer was checking and the research on that. And mm -hmm. any other thing she's going to do, she have to get consent from property owner. Again, her easement is not overpowered for the uh, land the property owner. She didn't tell us, and then she didn't get consent from us. Then she put our land to apply the permit. And this is to us is like disrespectful. I, I don't even know what to say anymore. Um, I'm actually on the process of revoking the conservation permit with uh, town agent David Morgan because it's including our property, which is surprisingly like we didn't know. And at least is what she said to me on our private meeting is she forgot to tell me she's just a human. And at least it's been two years. She forgot to tell me. And she's a real estate a realtor. And I don't I, I don't know what to say about it. I sent an email a couple of times, tell her strongly that I have to dig into if this land is like can afford this heavy machinery and expanding the uh, parking space. Like in my later, I do show that there's no retaining wall on the 218 
garden outside, like none of any retaining on our property. And there's one picture to show that actually on the side of 21A property, the parking space already broken down and sinking. And again, I don't know if this space can afford any expansion, any other paving, repaving, especially they are digging down 12 inches of the uh, premier over paver. Um, I also discussed this matter with the town engineer, uh, Mr. Chunayat, yesterday. And uh, the result is actually more concerning because I don't know where the water is going to go. I keep asking them to provide like a minus uh, stormwater management plan in Sketchy so we will understand what will happen because this is a, we are all on a slope. Just now, like we mentioned, there's a harmony of the, uh, this community. We're on a slope, like there's a reason why this house is building small in, instead of like other houses as a big, as like two story or three story. And uh, I don't know if the house is building over there, what will happen for the uh, rainwater and stormwater and uh, especially she's she's also leveling the parking space. So again, um, I very disagree our property was involved in and also including in, in the application. And I, like uh, me and my lawyer was looking into it and uh, there's not, nothing more I have to say. And uh, they, I, I actually encouraged Miss, uh, Mrs. Arkinghead provide her date and our date like to show she's not allowed to parking. She's only venereling and uh, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> passing and repassing in that property we provide as a right of way. She doesn't have a power to do anything without, get, uh, without getting our consent as a property owner. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to open up revised sketch here. Um, so I can just display this quickly. Uh, so, Ms. Isaac, when you sort of describe your property being a part of the plan, you're just with the so very top of the driveway. It's this it portion here. here, correct? Yes, that portion is the driveway, and I have no idea that she's going to modify it until November seventeenth. I send multiple emails to inquire, like, please let me know if any changes. I told her it's not about you took my plan, you steal my plan, uh, my property or not. It's about you have to communicate with me as a property owner before you decide to do anything to this, this land. Because I'm, as a property owner, I also have a right to understand uh, potential risk and the safety mm -hmm. happen in my land, especially the land is sinking. But she guaranteed to me in the email, my land is not including, there's nothing happening. But in my face, she does say that, okay, this is modifying and I forgot to tell you. And uh, this is things I cannot accept it. So, and just to clarify, so this dashed line here, I believe that comes up this way and comes along here, this is the edge of the easement, correct? Uh, actually, no, the, uh, the dashed line is my property line. The easement yep. is the solid line uh, between, um, like, how, how do I describe it? Uh, so this line here is the property line. This dark, heavy line is the property line. Yes, uh, I actually have a video if I can show uh, everyone that will actually explain everything. Um, let me, like, before we do that, um, <coughs> Mr. Switch. Chairman, yes, Mr. Go to the video. I wonder if it, could we try sticking a little bit more with the drawing? I, my understanding, if I'm right about, is that Ms. Isaac is, is is saying essentially that she has a fee interest, the ownership interest, in the area there that is that uh, is accessing the the parking area, uh, the area that's called existing driveway. Um, is that the only place where? there's an overlap between her property interest? Is that, is that the only place where the easement that she has granted to the uh, applicant is involved? Uh, no, Lisa, uh, she also have a right of way of uh, our uh, our property between me and 214, which is the road here. This is also ours. 
this is the right of way and uh, the piece of like the rectangle area here is also belongs to 218 again she on her deed she have easement she can uh pave and repave but she have mm -hmm. to talk to the property owner we have no uh, my my importance is not about she can or cannot. It's about there's no more communication beforehand, and uh, there's no um proper plan for the rainstone water on our side. There's no uh, we don't have a retaining wall to support their modify, and uh, I don't know what will happen to this piece of land as it already sinking down. So I do want to have more like town engineer to look into it and to understand what I, my part, I have to do instead of like, I just been notified, which is about two weeks ago that my land was being modified and I have no idea what's going on. So again, this is the land. Okay. So oh, it's, it's true. Is it true? I wonder if Mr. Cunningham can help us on this. If we were to grant a special permit here, that would not in any way diminish Ms. Isaac's right under her easement, would it? In other words, she, she'd she still have to give the same consent to the same things then that she would have to do today. Is that true? That's correct. So it's not like we necessarily have to have all of the property rights uh, squared away here, uh, but if we were dealing with a, a serious question as to whether or not something that is proposed here would adversely affect her property, that would be something that we would want to consider as part of the special, as part of deciding whether we should grant a special permit. And I guess to me, that's the most important question. The The question of sorting out the property rights is something that the lawyers can handle without our intervention. But I'm and but I I'm, am interested in knowing whether there's what basis there is actually for the contention that if the proposals that were being are being made here and and some of this is an area that was cut, taken up by, by with the conservation commission and already got some advice from the town engineer um i'm just sort of interested in knowing whether there's a, there's at least a colorable showing that we've got a significant harm here or whether it's just simply an open question that private parties have to resolve on their own so uh, I do have a pictures in my uh, later that show you the road is sinking and the breaking out. So if I may to show in here. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and stop so, my share yeah. first. Okay. So, okay. Um, so this tape is the line between 212 and 218. And the two one two has. Oops, uh, no, oh, we don't have a share. Oh, okay. Yeah, I still do not see anything being shared. Oh, I have a screen here. Am I? Can anyone see anything? Nope. Okay, so. Um, okay, let me try to do this. Is it showing? Yes. No? Okay. So uh, this is the the letter I submit. And uh, I need more time, by the way. But uh, this is the picture I'm trying to show. Uh, so the tape here is the property line between 212 and 218. And the 212 have one uh, retaining wall just in front of here. And the 218 has no retaining wall. 
So yes. as you can see, the, the, the road is already breaking out. Excuse me, could we possibly look at a survey instead of this that is not our property line? We have, I don't know if this is a- We have many Thank surveys you. that we turned Thank in. Thank you, Ms. Akinhead. Am I, am I allowed to continue to talk or? Ms. Isaac, yeah, um, but if you could, please try to wrap it up. Okay, so um, this is my side of land, land is already breaking out. And again, if she trying to modify anything on this land uh, without the retaining wall supporting, this piece of land will filling out from, you know, maneuvering or parking or constructional trucks. And uh, it will be my part of the land. And uh, what's the safety concern and uh, it increase the risk on my property. So I need, I just talked to the town engineer to try to get a piece of mind for it, but uh, I need more time to ask engineer, to ask more professional drug, drug list to understand what we should do or what what you should do in order to help this piece of the space. Because we just learned okay. that this is being modified two weeks ago. Yep. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, next uh, is John Garber. Let me just lower lower my hand. Okay, perfect. Th thanks so much. I, I really appreciate uh, the 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 chance to speak. So I'm I'm John Garber. This is my wife Sabrina. We have been here several times. I, I we live at two fourteen, um, Pleasant Street. We're gonna just try to keep it very brief. You know, not more than like five minutes here. Um, I, I just wanted to, <clears throat> I think, circle back to you know some of the comments that Mr. Hanlon had made about you know like harm like the question of harmony and harmoniousness with the neighborhood. You know, I think at a very like high level, um. You know, I think the plans that have come across our, you know, each of our desks here have have not really changed in any way since this all started. And it was, I think, a year ago, and it it literally feels like ten years ago for all of us, probably. But I, I, I just want to fundamentally state that, like, what's being proposed, it it really is just inharmonious with the character of the site. Um, it's a small lot. It's feet from the water's edge. Um, it's nine feet from our, our property line. So I think if that house there um, doubles and adds another story, um, I think part of the harmony of that that neighborhood is how the houses in this very tight pocket kind of relate to each other and you know respect and preserve um, each of the neighbors kind of you know views, including, you know, sort of their access to air and, and light and, you know, sunlight and views of the pond. And I think that that's um, something that's very um, intentional and it's, it's, it's purposeful and it's, it's what makes that this cul-de-sac, I think, very, um, very, very special. Um, and I think what we, as the neighbors, at least at 214, you know, stand to lose, it's, it's, it's really something that's very precious to us. And it's, you know, one of the main reasons that, you know, drew us to our house to begin with. And that is, you know, all of these things, the air, the, the light, the, the view of the pond. And I was hoping, you know, what I could do is maybe just, just show it, like if I could project my screen, just one or two pictures, um, if that would be okay, uh, the chairman and uh, Colleen. Um, Colleen, okay, if you would go ahead and do that, please. Okay, thank, thank, thanks so much. And um, and, and all, all I wanted to kind of get across here was, <clears throat> and I, can everyone see my, my screen here? Or? Yep. Okay, great. But, you know, just to, you know, I, I know that most of the ZBA, I think, actually came down to the site, and I, I think it was maybe like a year ago or so. And, um, you know, at one point, you know, we, we all kind of walked around and we kind of crowded onto our, um, you know, the small deck of the back of our, our house here. And I think we were, you know, kind of all standing there looking at the the existing house at, at, at 212. And we were trying to kind of visualize what, um, what was, what, what was being proposed, like, what would that look like? And how would the uh, impact be and we kind of like struggled a bit and we said you know the chimney is this high and if we add a couple chimneys worth what would the new roof height you know where, where would that land us and <clears throat> so you know we you know we we put this together and this is you know essentially based uh, you know to scale you know based on the architectural plans uh that have that have been provided and you know essentially this is this is what we would what we would be looking at um you know, every, every, every day, you know, and, you know, from our, this is a view from our, again, from our living room, a family room, 
uh, where our kids you know spend all of their time and we'd see this from the kitchen from from the from our bedroom um, basically from from most rooms in our house and I think one thing that we realized as we actually put this down and looked at this ourselves you know was that it's not really just so much the height of the proposed house but it it's also really the shape of the roof I think that has a, a really big impact for us and you know, I think you you can see like the existing house has this um you know kind of hip roof where the the roof kind of slopes on each side and and it that ends up being really important for us I think it really is important for us to actually uh, enjoy the sunlight and and the air and and the views of the pond, and you can see that this you know sort of flat roof, um, you know, it's really kind of this like monolith that kind of blocks those things for us, and it does that, you know, you know vertically on both sides all the way up to the to the height of the roof, and you know I think for us this really I think makes it really concrete for us like what the the negative impact will be you know on on, on us from 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 our house. Um, and I think the other thing that, um, you know, Mr. Hanlon had mentioned is that, you know, when we were uh, here last time, I think there was a strong kind of encouragement and like a real hope from the ZBA that, um, you know, that we would like come together and, and actually had to have a discussion and not like force the ZBA to decide this matter for us. And um, and, and so we, you know, we reached out to Mark, uh, to, to the applicant and, and, and we asked if they'd be willing to, you know, so we had coffee and we, we've had a good discussion essentially we asked if they'd be willing to explore a couple of things. And the first was, you know, would there be some openness to lowering that higher, that higher part of the roof over on the right, right side of the house. And underneath there, there's a, like a master suite um, and it has 10 foot, 10 inch, you know, cathedral ceilings. And, you know, we asked, would there be an openness to like lowering that to make it maybe level with the, with the left side of the house? I think that would, you know, afford us like a good deal of more access to the, to the sky. Um, and, and then the other thing that we, you know, asked was, would there be, you know, sort of a openness to kind of explore some of, you know, alternative um, roof shapes. And, you know, I think as, as the applicant had stated, there was some, you know, openness to willingness to consider a slight lowering of that higher part of the roof, like I think 12, 12 to 18 inches. Um, I think where we got really stuck, though, ultimately, is that really any change to the shape of the roof, you know, in the applicant's view was going to result in them giving up too much living space. And, and then I think inherent in that, there's also this um, kind of a circular kind of reasoning where, you know, the applicant really doesn't want to change any plans that would require, change the plans in any way that would require a re-review by the Historic Districts Commission. So I think this really constrains the applicant's willingness to, you know, offer any kind of real compromise. And, you know, we're obviously like super discouraged that we're, we're here again tonight. <laughs> Um, like we, we wanted to find a compromise and we wanted to have a plan that we could support and just all of us could move forward. And I think, you know, the, if the applicant, you know, isn't willing to depart even in like a small way from what's been approved by the historic district commission, then it doesn't seem that there's a chance for like a meaningful compromise here. And, and then I think ultimately it's us, you know, at 214, I think we end up being directly impacted, you know, so that, you know, so that the applicant can essentially you know, have like every square foot of that living space that they had originally counted on having, you know, when they developed and finalized these plans without any input from us, without any input from the from the neighbors. Um, so I think what we took away from that meeting is just that we were discouraged, but I think we also just realized that this historic district's um, approval, it's created this kind of a false barrier to like even a modest compromise. And yeah, I think as much as we were hoping to find some middle ground, you know, that would really uh, allow us to support this project and just for none of us to have to be here tonight, like, I think we just have to remain, like, firmly opposed to the special permit, you know, this is going to really have, um, you know, a, a real negative impact on us. Um, you know, I had other points to make about the parking, I don't want to get, you know, into the weeds too much with all of this, I, I do, I, we have concerns that, you know, changing the parking from one car to two cars, you know, I do think it's, it's, you know, it's fair to say it will change the traffic pattern over our shared driveway, which traverses our property and our kids play on that every day. And, you know, I think it will, you know, impact their safety and, and our peace of mind, et cetera. And I, I think that's significant. That's really hasn't been, you know, hasn't, hasn't been acknowledged. Um, so I, 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 I don't want this to be an overly drawn out process. We've all been here. It feels like many times. Just want to say we, we really do appreciate the ZBA's, 
you know, interest and in, in kind of their appreciation for the fact that this has been a burden for us to try to piece together all the parts of this really complex project. And I think, I, I hope it's not coming across as we're trying to find and poke holes and contradictions, et cetera. We're just trying to piece together all of these plans. And it's just drives us a little crazy when we see things like this new retaining wall that it's literally like the dimensions and the shape and its exact location. It's like the first time we've seen it in all of the plans we've ever seen. And it's just, it's been a real, a real burden uh, uh, on, on us. But so we appreciate the ZBAs like listening and trying to understand that full impact on us and, and the neighbors as well. So, um, so yeah, thank, thanks so much. Thank you. Um, and then also on our list um, is uh, Chi Yun Sun. Yes. Can you hear me okay? We can. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I would like to try to keep this brief as well. Um, and would it be okay if I share a couple of slides and pictures? It's easier for me to talk it through that way. Um, we can do that. If you could just give your address for the record. Oh, yes. So I am Chaoyun San uh, from 216 Pleasant Street. I live here with my husband, Matt Dawson. Great, thanks. You should be all set. Okay, so give me one second to... Okay. I'm having trouble finding it, so if you can give me... Is it the, the letter that you had submitted? Uh, yes, I think that would work, but I do have an extra graph I would like to show. So. Okay, I was gonna say, I have, the, yes. I have the letter available if that's helpful. Okay. Give me one second to see if I can find it. Fortunately, okay. okay I, I can't share. So would you mind bringing up my letter uh, with the no, first figure? That would be great. Okay, so um, yes. So yeah, I think I, I shared the sentiment, uh, feeling pretty frustrated, um, having to find out, having to really piece together the details. Um, I don't want to repeat too much what's already been said, but um, we've really only seen the location of the new retaining wall very recently. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think this is what I pointed out in the letter that the um, on the left is what the applicant has shown most recently, and the dimension just does not match what's on the architectural plan. And that's shown in the middle and the right. Um, so it's really still hard for me to figure out what exactly will be built um, and how that will impact our easement. And I also want to say that um, the, I, I still believe the plan is incomplete, inconsistent, and some of them incorrect in terms of the grading, um, regrading of the backyard. Um, and the in the newest letter, the applicant has said that since the Historic District Commission and the Conservation Committee has already approve the plan, they have to move forward with the existing um, blueprint. But how, but what I really struggle with is that if the approvals were based on incorrect and incomplete and inconsistent information, like that logic just really doesn't, um, is not very sound to me. Um, so I think that's the first thing I would like to point out. Um, and the second is really the parking area. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, would you mind bringing up the drawing that you brought up before? Oh, sure. Um, let's see. Oh, that was in this application. So let me start the share. Updated the parking and then share it again. There we go. Okay. Um, is it possible to enlarge it a little bit so we can see the uh, the parking area a little bit better? Um, I think this is the 
Yeah, you can. Well, actually, zoom in. Um, Where it says plus would do it. <laughs> yeah, like yeah I little, was having little... trouble finding my share the oh, screen. That's a 70.8%, so presumably. I think this is great. Okay. Let's say try to okay. scoot over. All right. Yeah, I think this is great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. So I think for us, um, for 216, we are particularly interested in the six feet easement. Um, and that's really the uh, the blue dotted line, the second mm -hmm. and the, the middle and the bottom, like okay. that's that mark the six feet area uh, to our easement. Um, the, our easement that's on 218, sorry, 212 land. Um, so since there's no dimension on this, it's still, I'm still having trouble understand um, the new dimension provided from the applicant, uh, 22 by 17, whether that include or exclude our easement. So mm -hmm. I, I think, and we've been trying, I, I use the ruler on my desk, trying to figure out where is 20 by 17. And it just, I, I don't think it should be up for interpretation. It should be marked clearly. So I think that's still something um, I struggle a lot with. And I think last time, the previous number just was way larger than what I what I see in our back, um, you know, in our neighborhood. So I'm glad there's new numbers, but still it's ambiguous. It's hard for me to assess how that will impact our easement. And also, um, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think we have provided some information in the letter, mm -hmm. how the parking just has been really um, challenging. And um, the video the applicant has shown is really, a very small car, a compact car and a subcompact car. And I, you know, I, I don't want to, to set up in a situation where we have to police what kind of car gets parked there so our easement wouldn't be obstructed. And I think another really important thing we want to, I want to point out is that um, there is a gray area on top of the mm -hmm. light blue area. Um, that's a really significant drop right now that will require a fill-in. Um, and also, I think in the area view that the applicant has shown earlier, there's a pretty large, very large tree that was there um, and was removed about a year ago. And that, we just don't know how the new addition with a tree removal how this will impact water runoff. And I think that can have very significant detrimental impact to our easement and probably more importantly to the abutters to 18 Pleasant Street. Um, so that's really the second point I wanna make. And, and finally, um, in terms of the harmony of the neighborhood, I, I, I think one thing to consider is really how um, each neighbor can enjoy the access to the pond and the view to the pond. And uh, while there's some aerial view that's shown um, how large the addition will be compared to other houses, I, I want to point out like 212 is really a smaller lot compared to other lots. So if you think of the lot coverage of all the um, all the lake from property 212 would be significantly or twice as high as the the neighbors um three or four uh houses down the road um and also i think what's kind of missing is also um the aerial view was provided and i think mr henlon uh mentioned that too like how how does this impact the um how uh other houses in the neighborhood and I think if the view were seen from the perspective of the lake I think it will be a lot different like you will not see after the addition you will not see 214 from the lake anymore so um, I think those are just a few points I would like to make um, to the board thank you thank you Uh, Mr. Moore, 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, I have uh, attended these these hearings and these continuations with interest. Um, and I continue to be amazed at the complexity of this particular uh, particular piece of property and the decision in front of the board. Um, I, I have to say I found the aerial views um, uh, a particularly good addition to this to see the sort of relative spacing of, of these homes and the size of these homes and such. Um, and I think Mr. Mr. Handel is correct in, in highlighting that the harmony with the, the rest of the neighborhood is probably the most complex and difficult issue. Certainly the parking is also important as, as we've heard from a number of the abutters. Um, I, in looking at the, the homes that, that abut this property from the aerial view, it is clear, at least to me, that the homes near this home of interest are, are larger, newer, or have been rebuilt or, or newly built, I'm not sure, uh, all relatively uh, in, in, uh, sort of somewhat of what looks like a newer space than, than this small home that's looking to be rebuilt. Um, and I have to, uh, you know, when we're talking about harmony, harmony with the other properties in the area, I think it is important to not have the word harmony be construed to mean no changes here. Um, I have to think that the neighbors own, purchased these properties, built these properties or rebuilt these properties with the knowledge that this home, which was small and not rebuilt or whatever, uh, would potentially someday perhaps go through a redevelopment of some sort, which is what's being proposed now in, in, from what I can tell. And the other homes went through this or were large and, and, uh, and built out. And I'm not sure that it seems right here to say that the current smaller home cannot be, that cannot happen because it impinges on the larger homes around it. I just, I'm finding a, a sort of cognitive dissonance here that way. Um, so I guess I would pose a question through you, Mr. Moderator, to uh, Ms. Eichenhead about, do they consider, is, is what was said by some of the speakers tonight about the fact that the Conservation Commission has approved a certain design, uh, the Georgia Commission has done the same, is, that truly the showstopper for making changes that would make the neighbors more amenable to what you're trying to do here. Um, is that true? I guess I would ask that first. Um, Zickenhead, are you able to answer the question? I would say that we don't have any objection to the time and effort it would take to go back to either board. We are extremely fearful of reopening or restarting public meetings, given what we're facing here and what we've been facing for all these months. So it is worrisome to contemplate a new plan that the neighbors can object to and the board could object to because the membership of both boards has changed. There are other, I mean, I could pull out the renderings that we did to try and figure out how we could accommodate the roof line requests. So there are other reasons also, but for the highest roof coming down a foot and a half, two feet, that's our big concern. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Moore. Okay. Mr. Chair, that, 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 that's a big help um, to understand the, the issues that the uh, proponent sees. And clearly, the I think the abutters have laid out the issues that that they see as important. Um, and I, I don't know if these other boards have the ability to amend plans without opening things back up. But um, it sounds like there is still some accommodative space here um, that folks are willing to talk. And I think more of that is needed to make this this work 
and I know that probably comes what what I'm saying here probably comes as not welcome news or, or welcome insight or whatever you want to call it, perspective uh, to Mrs. Eichenhead because it sounds like she feels that she's already accommodated enough. And it looks to me like the neighbors feel some additional accommodation is needed, but I, it sounds like some more talking does need to happen. And I, I, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Were there any other members of the public who wish to address the board? Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close oh, the public. Mr. Room. Chair. Oh, no. oh, we have someone waving their hands. Yes. Um, Tamara yeah. Joseph? Yeah, just a, sorry, I couldn't find the little hand, hand raised. That's okay. Sorry, we need your name and address for the record. Yeah, at Tamara Joseph, 210 Pleasant Street. Um, the uh, board has heard from me before, and I won't repeat those points. I, I do want to thank the board for your patience in examining this issue. I just wanted to, um, Steve uh, talked about the relative size and age of the homes. Um, since I've lived in the uh, area the longest of uh, these neighbors, I just wanted to point out that both uh, Ms. Isaac's home and Ms. Uh, Son's home are significantly older than uh, the property in question. Uh, they're from the 1800s, I believe. They have not been renovated. I mean, I'm sure they've been you know, maintained, updated, but I don't believe any additions have been made to them. Um, the home at 210 that I live in, um, I believe was built in the 80s, and the home that uh, John um, and Sabrina live in uh, at 214, I think is the same vintage as the home in question. Um, an addition was put on that. Uh, there was not a variance asked for uh, because the individuals who did the renovations specifically um, stayed within um, the, uh, kind of, uh, the boundaries. And in fact, I attended the historic commissions review of that, there was much discussion at the time about views from the Henry Call House on Pleasant Street um, and an interest in making sure that this combination of homes stayed within, um, that there was a perspective between them um, and that uh, one thing that I do think about here is if the board allows this, you know, what does that mean for future uh, renovations? I mean, does 214 then become larger? The Henry Call House, which has been there for over 100 years, does that then get some addition? I mean, that's not really what I think anybody wants spy ponds aspect to look like and i think i think that's something that the board should be considering as it weighs this concept of what is harmonious when one looks at these homes from the water um i spend a lot of time on the water and you know, I know each of the homes and as i pointed out previously there's kind of a tapestry effect of each one. You know, the lower ones have lower um, roofs, and as you go up, they have higher roofs. So I just wanted to point that out. Great. Thank you very much. Was there anyone further? Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close the public comment period for this hearing. Um, so there were several questions that were raised um, by members of the public, and I did want to uh, go back to Ms. Aikenhead on a few of these. Um, one of them she has already addressed uh, to Mr. Moore. Um, there was a question about the 
the length of the parking space as it appears on your property, it looks to me from that it is probably about 14 to 15 feet deep um, until it gets to um, the edge of the um, the easement. Does that sound about right to you? I believe we measured 15 feet. Okay. The edge of the easement. Then there's six feet of land on our property, which is 21, yep. and there's six feet of easement on the next property. Okay. It's 27, which is the number that was in our original document. Yeah. Um, so there was a question raised about the size of the properties. Um, I just wanted to go to this briefly. Um, so this is the from the town's GIS site. Um, so it shows the the property lines, the houses. Now, it's the GIS map. It's not a hundred percent accurate. That's like obviously this um, this property line, the way that the the site plan is drawn, it should be down the center line of the street. So there is some variation in exactly where it lays. Um, but it does appear that the lots for 212 and 214 are relatively similar in size. Mm -hmm. um, but they are both combined or about the size of 218 and 216. Um, the 216 looks about like one and a half times one of those sizes. So um, there is some variability in the lot sizes, but it's not um, it's not overly grand. Um, and I do appreciate um, Joseph's timeline on on some of the renovations and changes because um, it does sort of help to figure out exactly uh, when various parts of this were developed um, going at, in, in the past. Um, and then there was the, there were a lot of questions about what it, what it means to be in harmony. And I think that's something the board's gonna have to sort of figure out um, as Mr. Hanlon has sort of started that discussion, uh, that in order for the board to approve a large addition, which is an addition above 750 square feet, uh, or more than 50% of the existing building, there are three um, findings the board needs to make. One is that the alteration or addition is in harmony with other structures and uses in the vicinity, um, that the we we're supposed to consider the dimensions and setbacks in relation to abutting structures and uses and to consider conformity with the purposes of the bylaw. Um, and just to the just to refresh everyone's on the purposes of our bylaw, um, it's this section 1.2 in the in the zoning bylaws. to promote health, safety, convenience, morals, welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Arlington, lessen congestion in the streets, conserve health, secure safety from fire, panic, and other dangers, provide adequate light and air to prevent the overcrowding of land, to avoid undue concentration of population, to encourage housing for persons at all income levels, to facilitate the adequate provision of transportation, water, sewerage, schools, parks, and other public requirements, to protect and preserve open space as a natural resource, the conservation of natural conditions for flora and fauna, and to service an urban amenity for scenic and aesthetic enjoyment and recreation use, conserve value of land and buildings, encourage the most appropriate use of land throughout the town, achieve optimum environmental quality through review and cooperation by the uses of incentives, bonus design review, to preserve and increase amenities, encourage orderly expansion of the tax base by utilization, development, redevelopment of land. Um, so that is the purpose of the bylaw for that purpose. So with that, I would go back to the board um, on this question, on the, this first finding, um, whether the alteration or addition is in harmony with other structures and uses in the um, I know, Mr. Hanlon, you had sort of raised this initially. I wasn't 
sure if you had additional comments on it. Mr. Chairman, I I do, and I and I'm going to take a risk here in at least taking a tentative position at the outset in order to sort of focus, I hope, focus in on uh, the issues. To me, the issue of harmony uh, in uh, the basic finding that we're supposed to make um, is supported by the things that we're supposed to consider that come into the next paragraph. But the ultimate thing is the harmony thing. Um, I've never found it very helpful to go back to the purposes of the bylaw because, you know, there's an old saying that the devil can quote scripture to his own purpose and everybody who comes before us can find something in the purpose of the bylaw um, that will support his or her position. So I'm, I'm going to consider that, but consider it with a giant grain of salt. To me, the main thing is the relationship between uh, the relationship between the buildings. And it's true that the lots of 212 and 214 are quite similar in size, but because 212 borders on the lake, the buildable area is is all scrunched up uh, and right on where uh, on its borderline with 214. So what could have been done if that was available for building um, you, you could probably put this this building in a bigger building there and not present a problem with respect to harmony. But that's not the situation that we have here. Um, I agree with Mr. Moore that it's unreasonable to expect that nothing can be done. And I don't think that Mr. Garber or most of the other uh, res nearby residents are are imagining that nothing can be done. Uh, and I wouldn't say that you have to keep it as a single family uh, or a single story, and uh, tiny, in order to preserve layering of the view from the lake. That's not the relationship between the structures that is being talked about by the zoning bylaw. Um, but it, all, it really does come down to a, a fact that Mr. Garber highlighted. This in my view, unreasonably obstructs the view from 214. There are a lot of other things. There are other complaints and other letters that the view is obstructive in some from some others. Um, but ultimately, the issue here is that that emergence, as far as har harmony is concerned, is whether or not somehow this fits in in such a way as to reasonably at least preserve the relationship, not preserve unimpaired the the view from any particular house there's a certain degree of accommodation that is necessary when something new has to fit in harmoniously with something old but the it has to be i think a little better than it has been i'm very disappointed that the discussions about the shape of the roof and the size of the roof uh have have uh did not go anywhere i think that if they had gone somewhere uh and we had a proposal before us that uh, reflected what at least the attempt was of, of those kinds of alternatives uh, that I might feel uh, differently. Um, but as things stand, and of course, this is the first of our members to speak, and so I could easily be persuaded by my colleagues. But as it stands, I don't think I can support this application as it is. Uh, I think it could be improved. And and I'm not particularly concerned. This this is one of the most detailed applications I've ever seen. We normally don't get nearly this amount of detail, and it works fine. We're not going to have to get involved in the easement questions. There are property interests that the various people concerned are going to have to deal with um, with uh, on their own. Uh, but I think that the relationship that we have here and the degree of intrusion on uh, the abutting structures is violating the very interest that this portion of the bylaw is asking us to protect. And I think it goes a little too far. And uh, if it can't be, uh, and if it can't be fixed, then I probably will vote against the application. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Other members of the board? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Dupont, 
I'll take a crack at this. Um, I think this is uh, really complicated, as many people have said, and I do appreciate all of the thought that's been given to this uh, proposal by the neighbors. And I come down a little bit differently when I think of harmony uh, with the abutting structures. Um, I do understand um, what the Garber's viewpoint is in terms of what they see now and what they would likely see if this was constructed. Um, but I also think that, you know, I've heard people over meetings say light and air, you know, and sunshine and um, view. And, you know, I, and I take Mr. Hamlin's point, actually. I mean, it is something that we can consider. But on the other hand, there is no view easement or right in our bylaws explicitly. And I sort of echo what I think Mr. Moore had said as well, which is when you move into a property, you know, the fact that you move in and you have a condition next door in that's one way does not mean that you are necessarily going to see that condition preserved. So as I look at it in terms of the abutting structures, um, I am sympathetic to the point of view of the Garbers, but I remember the last meeting where we actually had a video that Mr. Garber had shown us, and I was actually a little interested to see that, except, I mean, I don't think they see the lake or, or Spy Pond over the existing roof line as anyway. I mean, I understand that additional height is going to cut out a little bit more sky. Um, and I think that, you know, the blockage would be over to the right. I didn't see in the picture that was shown today what it would look like if you were looking over to the right of that deck. So uh, even though I think that there are a lot of considerations here, I tend to think that it is harmonious. And I think that the other issues that have been raised, such as the um, stormwater management, I assume would be dealt with by the building department in the event that this was granted. And then in terms of retaining wall, if that's the concern that 218 has, I'm not entirely clear, quite frankly, what the claim is that's being made by them as far as what the danger is that's posed. But I would think that that is something that can be and should be addressed if there's going to be some sort of erosion caused by this in terms of runoff. And um, I, I do have a concern that we keep coming back here and, you know, there are discussions being had among the neighbors and the applicants. But in my view, as much as it would be preferred for there to be some sort of an accommodation, um, I'm not sure for me that that is a necessary criterion. And, and I do think it's reasonable for the applicants to be looking at this in terms of, you know, going back and opening up some other process where it's got to be a whole new set of hearings. Now, if it were something that was less stringent, and I think Mr. Moore might have also mentioned this, and it was just some sort of an adjustment which would, would be looked at as, you know, de minimis, and therefore it wouldn't be, um, you know, it wouldn't cause a rehearing and all of that. I could understand where you might gain some ground. But as it stands here, I'm in favor of the project, and I do think it's in harmony. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've been trying to, to wrap my head around this, this, this question of the view. Um, certainly zoning is not intended to preserve views. Zoning is um, more deals with use, um, with the ability to develop uh, what the limits are on those developments. Um, and with regards to the, uh, <clears throat> So the, the purpose is, is, is stated in the bylaws to preserve to preserve light and air and things of that nature. Um, 
certainly the the proposed project at 212 uh the the, uh, the owners of 214 are going to be the you know impacted more than anyone else um the you know uh, both in terms of use of the their easement to to access the building um and then but also more more importantly is the the facade of the building that's going to be directly um in front of them where they have uh to date sort of enjoyed a much uh, much more expansive view of spy pond um especially over the last probably the last year i think the removal of the the tree that was at the en end of the easement road um probably also afforded them you know much more in terms of a of a view out onto spy pond um i've been trying to get a better understanding of sort of what the impact will be on their view um certainly uh, referencing back to what mr dupont had said the the video that we had seen at the prior hearing um the the view straight out the back of their house has always been somewhat obscured uh, by the house, but also more uh, by trees that are on the property line between 212 and 210. And the their view has been more off to the right-hand side um, over the end of the easement uh, and sort of going out between 212 and 218 in that path. Um, and so the development of the house, where it is getting a little bit wider, it will encroach as the as the had been shown um in the slide prepared by the by the neighbor um it will certainly impact into that view um but i i do think that the the and i do understand that the idea behind the you know if we could have if the if the hips were if the roofs were hipped if there were other places that there could be a little bit more transparency to see through um it would improve that view the I think the the roof form that the applicant has selected is trying to make that roof plane as thin as possible um, and to try to provide as much view over um, over the house as they possibly can. Um, the heights, you know, if they can bring a little bit of height down on the addition, um, you know, I think that would be that would be helpful, but it's it will still be above a height. Um, that I think would be preferred by the the residents at two fourteen um, in terms of their view, but I think it, it'll also their view is more expansive off um, more towards the south uh, than uh, than straight out of their of their property um, right now. Um, I've been looking at a a Google view. I don't think it's necessarily um, accurate. Should one say? Um, wanted to show up briefly. So this is using Google view. Uh, so this is looking, so this is two, 216 at the very bottom of the image, 214, 212, 218, um, and sort of looking out. So you can sort of see along the axis, 214 straight out over 212. Um, there is some obscure, there is obscuring by the trees. And I think you could see that in the photos that were provided by the, by the residents at 214. It is more open um in front of 218 and i think that that's sort of the better view um out of the out of the property um but this is you know this is google street view it's only so good um i i do agree with mr hanlon it's the the question of whether the you know the level of, of obstruction at what point does it become disharmonious? Um, and that I'm still sort of struggling with that with that question. Um, I know the board has traditionally worked very hard to try to uh, come to consensus on a lot of things. Um, and I, and I fear that this is not something that the board is gonna be able to come to consensus on. Um, but um, at, at this stage by, I think my my greater concern is does you know is the existing development in the neighborhood does that preclude someone else in the neighborhood from enjoying the full benefits of their property because others have already and already enjoy the full benefits of their property um 
and I, I, that's the that's the part that I'm struggling with right now um, in regards to this question. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hanlon, just well, this is a quick comment on this because I think I mean I don't think that there's a huge gulf between me and uh, any and Mr. Dupont and you really um, in that. I think that there are things that Mr. Zakin had could do to satisfy um, uh, uh, my concerns. Um, but I just want to emphasize that this isn't just a matter of, of view, although the effect of having a, a property of a certain size and shape located as close as this is uh, to some of these other properties um, is manifested to a considerable extent extent by the uh, view but the way the the way the, the the large additions portion of the bylaw is a very strange position in a way because what it does is it says that you can't do what you could do as otherwise as a matter of right because we are attaching a particularly important a particular importance that isn't normally there um, to the abutting structures uh, and you know if this weren't by a lake if it was just somebody's backyard and suddenly you were having everybody keeping within the bylaws and so forth but had a substantial structure just a few feet away minimizing the way but leaning over the yard so that you could watch everybody on the deck and the kids playing and and smell the delightful smoke of the barbecue in the summer and so forth you would say under this bylaw you would say even though you are meeting all of the legal requirements it's too close it's too concentrated you're fully enjoying your property but they're not enjoying their property either and this provision of the bylaw is designed to give a little more weight than would normally be given to the people who are right next door. Everywhere else in this bylaw, incidentally, it's not about abutters particularly. It's about the neighborhood. But this is about abutting structures. This is about the structures in the vicinity and not in the general in the general neighborhood. So to me, there is there is something more here than we usually have. If we were doing section 3.3.3 .3 and just going through those criteria, I would not have much difficulty with this case. But I do have a difficulty. It comes down to view in some respects, but it also comes down into the the just the nearness of the shape and structure. It's not an unduly big house. It's not a huge house. There are many more around Spy Park, this by pond that are similar, but it's situated in such a way in a very narrow community that it has in its current form, I think just over the line, maybe not far over the line, but just over the line to what I think is reasonable. And I know that, that people have talked about this. I would have been happy to have an agreement. Uh, I would have probably bought us off on whatever it is the parties were able to, uh, to come to. Um, but I just think that, you know, in some ways, maybe the applicant, from my point of view, mm -hmm. and we may not be unanimous on this, from my point of view, this Ms. Aikenhead has sort of painted herself into the corner. She's got every all the other approvals, and now she doesn't want to reopen them. And she's there without the ability to make what otherwise would be perfectly reasonable accommodations to the values that we, as a matter of law, are attempting to uh, to protect. So I would, I mean, I'm, I'm certainly not, we've, I've, I wouldn't say I'm getting tired of this case, but it has been exhausting and I'm not sort of encouraging us to go any further, but without some indication that, that some further accommodation can be made in order to reconcile these interests in a way that, that is more sympathetic to the bylaw that we're trying to administer um, I still feel uh, sad because I think that there are a huge amount of advantages to the proposal we have before us. Um, and I'd love to see some movement. Uh, but at this point, I'm not persuaded. Thank you. Mr. Chair, could could I Mr. build off what Mr. Hanlon said? So I, I, I tend to agree. I think, you know, for me, this is a very unique site. It's a very unique neighborhood. Um, this is not, you know, a case that's very cut and dry. We, we sometimes have, you know, large addition applications where 
by right, someone could basically build the large house if they knocked everything down and started from scratch. That's the way it goes. And so then we have to look through at this large addition through the lens of, well, someone could do this right next door if they just bulldozed the house and started over. This case is, is much more complicated because, you know, this house is nine feet from the adjacent property line. I know that myself, if if I bought a house that you know had a neighbor nine feet away and it was a single story, I said, oh, maybe it's not so bad. And then that became two stories. I would say, well, they couldn't have built that themselves by right. And this large addition uh, bylaw is actually the only mechanism that's making sure that it can't be so tall that it, it really is detrimental to my, to my own home. So I, I tend to agree with Mr. Hanlon. I, you know, I, I think I'm sympathetic to, to all sides because a ton of work has been put in uh, on this on this application. But you know, going from that 25 feet front yard setback to nine feet, and then now bringing it up so high, I think it's it, it is detrimental. And I, I I'd also like to say that you know I, I think there was a lot when we talked about if if the structure is harmonious. People were talking about the size of the building. I actually don't think the size of the project is a problem at all. I I, I think that that's not a concern to me. It's really um, the relationship to the property line and to the neighbors, because for instance, if that second level was set back uh, further from that closest property line, uh, I think that we'd be having a different discussion about uh, you know respecting that access to views and lights. Uh, that that you would have from that backside. So uh, I, if we were to vote right now, I would I would not um, be in favor uh, of approving. Thank you. Other members of the board, Mr. Chair, Mr. Holly. Um, thank you. I'm torn. Um, between this, uh, you know, the clients have tried um, to do what they can. The The portion of the building, which is low height, which is the existing is already impeding the views. Um, I, I don't know what could be done to the new addition that could mitigate it. Um, I, I'm not sure, um, you know, adding extra glazing, making it more, Transparent, I don't know if dropping the main um, roof by one foot six inch, I don't know what the purpose it serves. I'm not sure if that brings down the view completely as is thought about. Um, unfortunate that the that the house is stuck the location of where it is because of, you know, you know, it being close to the water on the other side, it's restricted. But I, I think I kind of agree with um, um, uh, Mr. DuPont that it, it, it came with it, right? I mean, it, it, buildings will be updated. The neighborhood will be updated at some point. Um, so, um, I, as I, as Mr. Hanlon said, I wish there was some compromise made, and we were not put in this position. Yeah. But um, unfortunately, here we are. And I, I do, I don't know how much of this improvement that is being sought for. Um would really help i you know it's it's obviously between the 214 and 212 unit cuz that they are the most compromised in this case and i i sympathize with them i really don't know um what more could be done um that could minimize the impact um so i don't know if i <laughs> um it's a tough one i probably would vote in favor just looking at it that you know um, the impact was already there to begin with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes, Ms. Hoffman. I'll speak up even though I believe I'm a non-voting member in this case. Um, I, I share the kind of challenge of the rest of the board and determining what the sort of reasonable impact to the views might be uh, 
And I just wanted, I was struck by the um, drawings that were shown at the beginning of the hearing with the height of the addition shown relative to what would be could be done by right. Um, because I think it is worth noting that it is significantly lower and um, to the point um, that Mr. Holy was just making, it's not totally clear to me that the reduction in height of a, you know, a foot and a half or two feet would result in significantly less impact to views or light or air for that matter. Well, thank you. Um, do you want to go back to those sketches? All right, so what, what Ms. Hoffman would, was sort of referencing, so as long as you stay within the footprint of the existing house, you can go up to two and a half stories. Um, and it does not require review by the zoning board. It can be done by right. Um, and you max out at 35 feet. Um, so you know, with this being the, the 35 foot line, effectively someone could build out this floor, build a tall second floor, do a pitched roof with a half story facing um, facing the water. And that could be done as long as it doesn't stray outside the footprint of the existing house. And Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. And that and that could be done by right if it was under 750 square feet. And then it would not be in front of us tonight. well as long as it stays within the foundation wall it doesn't matter how large it is because it's only 750 square feet outside the existing foundation wall right. right to 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 that extent mr chair that the addition is set towards away from 214 to that extent mm -hmm. um you know Intuitively towards the water, fair enough, but set away. And the low height still happens to be already existing yeah. within the nine feet from the property line and is already low. So that's where the dilemma is that, you know, at what point, you know, it is a um, hindrance right. to the approval, yeah. Because right, this portion, this would be the facade at nine feet, would just be this portion here. And then this portion here is set back um, additionally from the property line. Hey, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. So I have a little bit of a problem I'm sort of taking as the benchmark uh what would happen if you stayed within the foundation wall and then maxed out on the building height uh mm -hmm. that may actually be something that could be done as far as the zoning bylaw is concerned but there are other agencies particularly the historic district commission that would be involved in a decision of that kind and mm -hmm. if if in fact it's a problem going back to the hdc in order to reduce the height by a couple feet, it seems pretty tough to go back to them uh, to increase the height up to the maximum allowed. Uh, that isn't going to happen. And we've already heard that when the HDC did have a discussion, they were very concerned about protecting view sheds uh, from locating uphill from the house. Um, I, mean, I, I don't think that we should be justifying what we're looking at here by the straw man of what might be built if we imagine that none of these other commissions mattered. They all do matter, which is part of the reason why we've got a problem. 
Um, so again, it I, I do undertake that I was encouraged a little bit by the notion that a discussion was had and that Mr. Garber at least seemed reasonably happy about what could have come out of a, of changing some changing some shapes, changing the massing a little bit, dealing with some some room off. Um, I have the opinion I, I have the feeling that if if we were to take a 20 minute break and to say uh, it's now or nothing, the board is equally split pretty much and come up with something that makes this work, that probably that could be done. But I think that, I mean, my view is that more can be done. Uh, other people, I think, differ on whether or not anything more significant could be done. Uh, the people who count most seem to be a loggerheads on the issue and 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 there we are it's the difficulty of this case is already reflected by the difference of opinion on the board um if if the chair could remind me what is the what is the uh, by what majority does this have to be approved so uh it's it's a it has to be a vote of four members of the board in favor for a five member board So then for the board, um, or I guess I would include the applicant in this discussion as well at this point. So we have um, potentially two votes in opposition. We have potentially two votes in favor and a chair who is still wavering. Um, where a you need a positive vote of four members of the board. Um, I will sort of offer the question to you. Do you want the board to proceed to a vote or would you be looking to um, possibly with, with, you know, with withdraw and reconsider what you may want to do on the property. I, I read the reason I offer you that is that if the board issues a negative decision, it does um, initiate two years in which you cannot reapply without significant change um, to the proposition. Okay, so those are the two choices. Take a vote or withdraw? So we can, so the board can take a vote. And if the vote is in favor, then the vote's in favor. If the vote's in opposition, um, then there would be a two year period before um, this plan could be resubmitted. Um, I okay. believe there are some provisions for if it's a significantly different proposition, you can reapply earlier. Uh, but if it's essentially the same, it has to be two years. Um, if you were what had wanted to withdraw the application, um, if you were concerned about uh, a possible negative vote and a possible two year delay, um, then you may want to consider a withdrawal. Uh, but I, I, I sort of give you that option at this at this stage um, to help you to sort of preserve your options. Okay. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, a uh, quick uh, point. Uh, Mr. Moore, yes. Oh, only that doesn't, isn't there also an option for the applicant to ask for a continuance? Um, they could ask for a further continuance. Yes, that's true. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Hanlon. Um, I was going to make the same point that Mr. Moore did. I, I don't know whether it would, I mean, this has gone on for a long time now, of course, and it, there's been a lot of things back and forth. Um, 
if Ms. Aikenhead thinks that there are some things that either could result in a settlement or to change a vote uh, that that might help, uh, then you know she might want to consider doing that. I, I'm very sensitive to the fact that we've been going a long time and mm -hmm. she's done everything that she's been asked to do in terms of more details and then more details are asked for yet. And I don't, I'm not interested in doing a death by a thousand cuts here. Uh, but if Nellie can think, had, thinks that she can come up with something, whether or not it has the agreement of the neighbors that w would persuade at least one more vote or two votes maybe to that, uh, that she's done all she can and what she has is fully reasonable, uh, that may be an alternative that's better than either of the other two. Mr. Chairman? Yes. So I just would like to say that, you know, if um, the applicant decides to withdraw or to ask for a continuance, you know, there should be a clear sense as to what it is would get her over the line. And my concern is I do know, you know, that people have spoken in opposition and have, you know, a lot of valid concerns. But the ones I think that we have focused on more are the concerns of the Garbers. And I think that Mr. Garber had suggested, and, and maybe I misheard, but suggested that some sort of a reduction in the height on that uh, larger uh, structure to the right of a foot and a half or somewhere in that area would be meaningful. And so I have a concern that if somehow that was managed and then brought back to us, that we don't have any commitment on anyone's part to say, that's fine, that works for us. And so I do have that concern that, you know, this is not just this constant, you know, go do something mm -hmm. else, go do something else, that's not good enough. And so I I do think that that's an understanding we should have. And I would think this is just editorial, but I would think that if that's the case, uh, other members of the board should feel free to look at this and say, look, you know, what can be done has been done, and therefore it now is, you know, more in harmony uh, that's no guarantee. I can't tell anyone how to vote. But I do think that we are sort of at the, you know, pointy end of the stick here. And we got to figure out what it is that's going to work. Mm -hmm. So I'm just concerned that this is just going to potentially just sort of spiral. Uh, so anyway, that that's what I was thinking. Okay. question while, while you're thinking about the next steps. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, there was there has been a discussion about the um, the other approvals um, that the applicant went through, uh, Historic and ConCom. Um, if if there were to be, a, um, you know, a compromise, a change in a design that would then trigger re-review of those, would that have to occur before we approved that new plan because I think from a timing perspective that uh, that may be impactful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it becomes a cart horse question at that point um, where there's multiple boards. We I know in our rules and regulations we do like we do prefer that applicants get approval of other boards before they come to us um but this may be a situation where um you know it might be help you know honestly it might be helpful for to have a joint meeting with some of these other boards uh just for the purposes of 
the discussion on this point um to really try to iron out exactly uh what would be you know what the other board's concerns are and what would be amenable um i mean i certainly have some thoughts about adjustments that could be made to this proposal that i think would address some of the concerns um but that would certainly be you know up to the applicant i think part of the my looking at it if there's any way to you know the currently the addition extends five foot two five point two feet past the edge of the existing building um to the south if there was a way to have that be lessened so that um it maintains that line of the existing foundation wall um, that would also pretty much bring it under 750 square feet worth of addition. So that would remove the criteria as it being a large addition. Um, so that's sort of one thought. Um, that would The other thing that has been mentioned a couple of times, um, which is an existing condition, which is, you know, predates this application, is the, the parking situation where the parking is only 15 feet deep. Um, that's a pre-existing condition. It's not something that is being made worse by this project. Um, it is being increased in depth, so it is being made more compliant, um, but still remains outside of compliance. If the house was pulled back, there might be a possibility of um, maybe making the parking a little bit uh, better accommodated on the site. Um, <clears throat> In regards to the, you know, as Mr. Hanlon and, and Mr. DuPont said, the questions of the, the easements and the use of the easements, that's beyond our our our, our, uh, our scope of, of work and would need to be um, dealt with in other in other venues. Um, I would like to think that there is a way that we could work with um, if the applicant was amenable of working with historic and conservation on um, coming up with uh, some criteria that would be amenable to all three boards. Um, I think that would be something that would be worth discussion. Um, it would be something that if we, if the, if the board continued that it would offer us that time to, uh, to reach out to those other boards and see what would be uh, possible in terms of um of cooperation and coming up with um you know some ideas for how we could uh we could provide better uh, better direction to the applicant in terms of what would be um acceptable to the boards Um, so that I would turn back to Ms. Aikenhead again. Um, so as we discussed, we couldn't go forward and vote on the application that's in front of us. Um, or you know, we could ask you to, with, you could request to withdraw or you could request a continuance. Um, and we can try to try again to see if we can come up with a, with a proposal that's, um, you know, not only amenable to this board, but would but would remain amenable to the uh, to the other boards that you've had to appear before already. Well, I would say, I guess we're open to continuing, even though I agree with all of you. This has been a very long, very time consuming, very difficult process. We're open to having another conversation. I, I did draw up stuff. I'm not going to show it now that kind of looked at the roof lines and how it impacts, impacts the interior. I feel like conservation is concerned with the footprint of the building, which wouldn't get any bigger, would get smaller. If anything, I don't think it's going to be a big issue taking out permeable pavement and replacing it, putting back the impervious could be an issue. That's their thing. I think mm -hmm. the historic we could probably work with if we were working all together. One of my bigger fears is that Every time we have a continuance, 
all of the neighbors gang up and write another letter and they put out a whole bunch more claims and a whole bunch more things out there that we have to refute, rebut or ignore. And I would hate to continue this hearing in good spirit like we did last time and we met with the neighbors and then just have another slew of that stuff. And I don't know that we're able to prevent that. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hanlon, could I just I, I certainly sympathize that. I mean, this is one of those cases that every time we hear it, it's just as complicated. As it was the last time we heard it. it. It's not moving towards convergence. And I would like to be clear that if I come to the point, uh, I don't I'm right now convinced that there's re that reasonable people can make this better and that they should. Um, but if I come to the conclusion that we've done the best we can, uh, then I'm not going to be interested in a lot of, I, and I, I would be willing to vote in that way. And I will not be interested in new issues that have been raised or, you know, speculation about stormwater management or whatever. We'll let the whole system work. But I, I, I said the position that I have now but I do want to make it clear that it's not a fall on your sword sort of position. And when we finally get to the point where we just have to say nothing can be done, this is as good as it's going to get. We have to decide whether it's good enough. Then my vote could go on either side. Mm -hmm. well, I guess, Mr. Hanlon, to your point, if 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 the applicant feels that there is still some some room for um discussion with uh this with not only this board but with conservation um and with with historic on some possible other modifications um which would still leave you with you know a, a, with a project with a with a home that you can um <clears throat> You can utilize uh, as you would like. Um, then it would make sense to continue to try to get to that point. Um, but as Mr. Hanlon said, if you feel that you know you don't have that option, um, then we would need to. We would, you know, it may be worthwhile to um, to 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 stop moving forward at this point and just. You know, um, vote on the matter. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, this is, um, may I ask why Hi. you're- I apologize. I, I, this is um, Sarah Radigan from Trilogy Law. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's a little noisy so the background public, here for a minute. So just, yeah, so the public comment period has come and gone? Yes. Um, so you're I'm speaking counsel... outside of the public comment period? I, I did want to just pose a question um, to you, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm counsel to John Garber and Sabrina Howe. And to the question of the kind of the, the usefulness of a continuance and how we might be able to, as the most impacted abutter, kind mm -hmm. of reach an agreement that, you know, again, the goal would be to come back with a modified plan that um, my client could, could be on board with. Um, I thought it might be helpful for the board members to at least weigh in on one of the things that has been holding back, I think, um, Ms. Eichenhead in, in a willingness to make some changes to the roof line, which I think is what um, they were really hoping for. And it's that that those changes will impact um, usable space in the proposed addition. Uh, and um, just to be clear, We've talked about some things that could be done, you know, without sort of specifying that modifications to the project are, are a compromise and that we we would expect the, the Garber Howe family would expect that um, those compromises would entail some loss of, of usable square footage that she had hoped for. Just a, a mm -hmm. sort of a, a, a request for a little clarity on that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I 
so the the question back to to, to the to the applicant um you know would you like to continue and have us uh and continue the conversation i can certainly discuss certainly talk to conservation talk to historic about um you know what would be the most efficacious way of um you know sort of continue a conversation so that you can um so we can try to address the, the changes without going through multiple rounds with multiple boards um but in the end you would need to be you know making adjustments to the plans that would um you know try to re reduce the you know the, the front on visual impact um and to try and uh you know i guess sort of rework what you can what you can do within the 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 area of the lot that's allowed to you by conservation i guess what question i had did did conservation specifically tell you you couldn't extend the addition forward of the existing house line they feel that this uh, above the retaining wall is already essentially degraded site it has nothing to do with the natural environment and the pond shore so they were okay with the retaining <laughs> wall back which is where the current house is already i didn't ask for anything more than that because mm -hmm. you know we're trying to be reasonable right i'm sort of wondering if the so the 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 addition portion yeah. if it was less wide but deeper what do you think that that would be something that conservation would frown upon mm -hmm. immediately or i suppose we could ask them it's going into the it's not the 50 foot setback so they care the most mm -hmm. about 25 then 50 where that's outside of the 50. Right. So maybe, but but they seemed enthusiastic about the retaining wall foundation line and higher rather than lower. I don't know if they would say no. I will mm -hmm. say that there's a formal order of conditions. It's recorded documents. This property yeah. is bound forever to that. To that, it's not just the conservation commission. It's the MADEP also, and I, I think it would be very mm -hmm. difficult to make that kind of change. I feel like historic could be a little easier. Yeah. And I don't, I, I know you suggested that pulling back the addition might improve the parking, which would be fantastic, but I don't, I don't know if that would work either because, because of this, this drop off in the grade and those steps and all, I don't think we have a way to maneuver into that area. I see, I see. Got it. Okay. I mean, I think like I don't. I know it's getting super late. This is crazy. I, I have visuals that talk about Sab Sabrina and John proposed. You know, maybe you could do a hip roof, or maybe you could do a gable roof here. And I made all the visuals. I think there are things that we could do to reduce things a little bit, but I don't mm -hmm. think it's going to be where they talked about us being. And I don't know if there's room on their side either. Like, if we have a gable roof like this. Yeah. Which is one thing they suggested, or a hip roof, you could make your hip roof steeper and have more living space inside and not compromise so much, but then you're affecting the views they want, which is on the outside of the hip. Right. right? So I replicated the, the lines that we have now and put them up and put them down to see what would happen. And it just wasn't workable. There's something that's workable, but it's got to be workable for them too and it's not going to be basically a hip roof raised up to where they want it gives us almost nothing on the second floor would be a waste to build it there's something mm -hmm. in there but it's two-sided thing right and i also do want to emphasize like we put that 35 foot roof line on there for illustration we're not we're not implying that we could build that or that we would build that or we want to build that we're just saying like if we mm -hmm. were there we'd have a lot to give up we're not there, we're at 26 feet, and we don't have a whole lot of wiggle room to do something better. Right. Okay. So, I, mean, yes. I guess I'll leave it to the board because 
I know this is a huge time sink for you guys. I, I think if you've made up your minds and a little change doesn't really matter so much, if you want to vote it, you should vote it. If you think we can have some more conversations and see where it leads, I'm always happy to chat and I'm always happy to toss around ideas and I'm always happy to see if we can meet somewhere. So if the, if the board was looking to continue, the things we would want to clarify, so I would reach out to CONCOM and I'd reach out to Historic to try to understand better what the impact, the implications would be so I can present that to the board. Um, at the same time, I think we would be asking that the applicant to see if there's a way of minimum, I would put it as minimizing the the visual impact beyond the footprint of the existing house. Um, I don't know, Mr. Hanlon, if you have another way of sort of stating that. No, I think that's, I think that's right. I, I, I wouldn't. I don't. I don't know how much weight I would put on the beyond the the foundation of the existing house, but I think the general intent is is what I have in mind. If if somebody had a brilliant idea that didn't fit, fall in there, then that would probably that would probably be fine. I don't want to inhibit people's creativity, but but that's basically the point. Mm -hmm. So if, the, if we were to continue, we have a meeting December 12th, uh, which would be a possibility. Um, and then I think we're the next after that, we would be looking at January 9th. December 12th, I believe, is three weeks from now. December 12th would never work. It's like, This is extremely time-consuming. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I don't know. We could I go think... for January 9th. If you want to continue, I would recommend that we continue to January 9th, or we go ahead and vote on the application that's before us. Can I ask one question? Yeah, of course. So we need the special permit, not because of our second story, because that's by right, but because our addition is more than 750 square feet. Is that correct? That is correct. And we can't, we're counting the basement, even though it's not a story, because... Ceiling height? Um, so we I mean, counted gross floor... Yeah, let me go to the definition. Oops. So for gross floor areas, the areas that are included, um, so basements, basement areas, unless they're for mechanical use. Uh, so basement would be an area that more than half of the height is above grade. And then cellars where more than half is below. So cellars and basements are both to be included in the calculation of gross floor area unless they're dedicated exclusively to mechanical uses. And so that's why that lowest level is included. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I don't have the numbers that I remember at one point the ISD took the position that uh, that this was a large addition because it was more than half the increment was more than half of the gross floor area of the 
existing and i don't have those numbers right in front of me right now but i have a guess that even if it was otherwise and you deducted the basement from the gross floor area it might be a major addition based upon the view that had been expressed by isd i think the second floor doesn't count into that figure it's by right the the addition is the figure that counts i think the isd thing that came up Initially was the declaration that our basement was a story because they calculated the average grade and then they recalculated it and said it wasn't a story. Mm -hmm. So that was for the the number of stories. Right. Correct. So, correct. So I'm just asking because Yeah. So there's right now it looks like there's three levels at each at about 320 square feet. Because the basement counts because that section of the basement. Yeah. But the rest of the basement isn't. Right. So the rest of the basement, the part that is dedicated to utilities, does not count towards the gross floor area. But because it's within the existing footprint, it doesn't matter. It's it's only the portion that's beyond the existing footprint that matters. And if it didn't have a door, it was just basement foundation space. Well, we don't have to get into this now. That's all right. Yeah. That's all right. Don't worry. Yeah. I'm... But if, like, yeah, because if that was built as like crawl, you know, crawl space foundation instead of a, the indoor outdoor room, then it would not count towards gross floor area, but you would not be able to use it for anything. Right, right, okay. So at this point, um, I would like to move forward with a vote on a continuance. Um, Okay. So this would be a motion to continue special permit hearing 212 Pleasant Street until Tuesday, January 9th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. Do I have a second on that motion? Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. So for so just for the board, this is a, a vote to continue the special permit hearing for 212 Pleasant Street until Tuesday, January 9th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. Roll call vote of the board, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. And the chair votes I we are continued on 212 Pleasant Street um, until January 9th. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Thank Good you, night. everyone. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Okay. So going back to our agenda. Where are you? There you are. Uh next item on our agenda is docket 377554 Mary Street Unit 2. Um, I'd first like to uh, thank the applicant for their patience. Um, but if I could ask them to uh, uh, identify themselves and tell us what they are looking to do. Sure. Chairman, thank you. Board, thank you for uh, inviting us. Uh, what, I'm Manish, this is my wife, Risha. Um, we're just looking to convert a balcony into an office. Uh, it's a small space. Nothing changes, it's just a balcony with a roof and windows. Uh, and that is largely driven by the fact that, you know, after the post pandemic period, we find increasingly that remote work is the norm. So while earlier we were, you know, both going into the office, now we find that our colleagues are not coming into the office. So <laughs> it's like working four days a week from home. And it's becoming a bit of a challenge, when, especially when we get on calls, we just kind of bump into each other uh, vocally. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so we just kind of create a very small space where we can kind of you know, work individually. And, that like a, and yeah, we love Arlington, you know, 10 minutes to Spy Pond, 15 minutes to Ale Wife Station. What else could you ask for? Uh, <clears throat> it's a great neighborhood. And uh, as far as I can tell, you know, it, it, the balcony is already there. It's already, we're not doing anything, uh, you know, special to it. Uh, it's just trying to make it usable so that, you know, if, if we need to work, we can actually do the work. And that's better yeah. than schlepping all the way into Boston. Absolutely. <laughs> As I say from my, <laughs> my home office. <laughs> um, the, how, how long have you been in this house? Five years. Five years. That's great. Um, so I've been looking over the, let me go ahead and share the plans. Um, there's a, so this is the existing view from the rear. Right. So you see the sunrooms on the yeah. first and second floor, and, and that's the balcony up above. Right. Um, uh, this is the existing plan of this floor. So two bedrooms and then the deck. This is the existing, so they said front side, this is actually the rear elevation here. Yep. Uh, and there's a, there is a there's stores here correct now onto the onto the balcony as it is. Uh, sorry, say that again. Yeah. There's yeah. there's yeah. there's yeah. sliders here, sliding yeah. doors okay. out on the balcony sure. now. Yeah, yeah. And then the side view is a little strange because this is actually a peaked roof in this should be a peaked roof in this view, and this door is actually under the addition, but that isn't really material. Um, and so the looking here, so this would be enclosed. There'd be windows on all three sides. Correct. Um, and then a new uh, pitched roof, which would be a 3.7, uh, sorry, a 312 pitch um, over the top of it. Um, and then this actually meets up into the existing pitched roof. Right. Which the drawing is, doesn't have right. And then you have some structural plans. Um, and here just uh, this detail here. So this is the 312 pitch that they're proposing uh, for that purpose. Um, and I know this was originally put forward as a variance application um, because it, it is in excess of two and a half stories which is the maximum that's allowed uh, but this is a pre-existing condition um it's a little bit of a curious pre-existing condition because it the apparently it was constructed in 2016 um on plans that were approved by the inspectional services department um but did not come before the board when it changed from being below 2.5 to being above 2.5 um but that is not material to us now. Uh, so the variant, because this is a pre-existing non-conforming, um, this board knows the board can uh, make a section six finding that the change is not significantly more detrimental uh, to the neighborhood than the existing condition. And if the board can make that finding, uh, then it can approve it um, by a special permit. So with that, um, the variance application um, is still technically before us, but it is not required. And so just to cl clear up the record, we would ask the applicant if the applicant would be willing to uh, withdraw the variance application. And then we can proceed with the special permit application, which is the only application you need. Sure, absolutely. Whatever facilitates the process. Okay. And I would just ask Mr. Cunningham, do we, do we need to vote on the withdrawal or do we just accept it? Um, a vote would be preferable. Okay. But that very, very well explained, Mr. Chair. So I would move um, that the board accept the withdrawal of the variance application uh, for 54 Mary Street. Can I have a second? Second. 
Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. So vote of the board to accept. Let me switch over to the other book. Uh, so roll call vote of the board, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. And the chair votes aye. So the variance application is withdrawn. That leaves us with the special permit application. Um, so as I said, this is um, a section six determination. It falls under 813 in our local bylaws, uh, which is for non-conforming single family or two family dwellings. Um, so the board would need to make a finding that the increase in the non-conforming nature of the structure will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing condition. Are there any questions for the applicant before I open the hearing for public comment? Mr. Chair. Mr. LeBlanc. I have a couple. Um, okay. The first one, I was just looking at the um, Google view of the, the home and uh, noted that there was some solar panels on the roof. And I was just curious if those were still there and if they'd be affected by the um, by this addition. They will not be affected by the addition. Uh, largely because they're offset a little, so uh, they're back, and we're just tying into the roof, literally just going in, you know, tiny amount. So they will not be, in fact, you know, I want to add more solar panels onto the <laughs> roof that will go on. Okay. Because I maxed out on this one. <laughs> I got you on that. Um, my other question is, is um, I, it's probably in the, the documents, but I wasn't sure if this was a, a single family or if it was a uh, Kind of a condo situation it's a two-family condo unit okay um have you been in touch with your um the other tenants and their yes. owners in the condo and their they, have no, they have no issues i mean it doesn't do anything it's just a balcony with windows <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i i only ask just because we've had a couple of sure. these types of things come up and sometimes um there's disagreements and you yeah, know way down yeah, in a way, and the condo docs are written and stuff like that. So I just want to make sure we're all. Yeah, I, I checked with my neighbor. Uh, even before I filed the application, I checked. <laughs> and he like, whatever. Uh, those are all the questions I had. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Gadelli. I, I just have one question. It, it's really not material, but I'm just curious. Uh, I know some of the on the drawings, uh, I was wondering if the applicant could clarify that the the new roof of the proposed addition, the enclosed porch, uh, notes a membrane roof. Do, are you guys proposing that it would not be shingles on that new roof, even though it's sloped? Um, I will let, uh, I think the contractor, Anthony mm -hmm. is here. He might be able to better answer that question. This is not something that I fully understand. Yeah, yeah that, that's great. Hi, this is Anthony, um, contractor. We opted to go with the rubber with a flatter roof just because of any any possibility of a snow buildup or ice or anything like that. We figured it's just a safer bet. Understood. Okay. Okay, thank you. Because it's a 3 to 12 slope, I think it says in the drawings, right? Yes, it'll be a uh, with installation, it's going to be a cold roof. So oh, okay. there's, a, there's a possibility of more snow possibly sitting up there so we figured it's just a better way to do it understood thank you so much any other questions <laughs> seeing none i'm going to go ahead and open for public comments uh, public comment is taken as it relates to the matter at hand and should be addressed to the board to help with our decision um you can digitally raise your hand using the uh the button on the reactions tab and we have uh, with us um, Patricia Brown. Hi, can you hear me? We can. Okay, Patricia Brown, I'm at 49 Mary Street. Um, I just want to, I waited all this time to support your position. <laughs> uh, um, it was really interesting hearing all the other stuff, and I was hoping you weren't going to be going through all of that. Um, but yeah, no, I they're they're great neighbors, and um, you know I think what they're doing is is helpful for uh, for them, and is not going to make really any difference in the neighborhood. So I support their position. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are 
Are there any others who wish to address this matter? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public comment period. Um, so as I stated before, so this is Mr. false Chairman. under section 813B. Oh, Mr. Moore. I'm sorry. I, I've been trying to figure something out based on the presentation and it took me a while to get to the hand button. I apologize. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, and I apologize if you talked about this already. Um, in the presentation, this red box that is there is not the property, is it? No, page? no, but I think it shifted before they printed. All right. And so you did talk about this already. I All right. My one my one question is, has the neighbors that abut the rear of this house where the porch is being uh, removed uh, weighed in on how they feel about this addition? I, maybe again, I apologize if, if no, that's already been discussed. Certainly. As that uh, of the applicant, do you did you talk to the neighbors uh, behind you? Uh, no, we haven't. But again, you know, it's not something that uh, we felt was any um, inconvenience to anyone because we do go out under the balcony every now and then. It's just a question of opening a window now. <laughs> We're not expanding the. We're not, yeah, I mean, it's not expanding the footprint or anything. Right, Mr. Chair. The, my my one thought was. Um, I don't know how close the property line is to the rear of this structure. And that's what I was trying to find on Google Maps and got all enmeshed and realized oh. it's in the wrong place. So if they're not too close, then it, this probably is a non-issue. So they are close. Okay. Yeah, no, they do have a pretty reasonable backyard and it's uh, it's a solid solid line of trees between the, the, the houses back to back. Great, that's good news, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that were really close on the public comment period. Um, so as I say, so this is a non-conforming single family, two family dwelling section 813B of the zoning bylaw, uh, where the board would need to find that an increase in the non-conforming nature of the structure will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing condition. Um, and in making its determination on a case like this, the board would typically um, go through the required findings uh, for a special permit under section 333. And so just to uh, review those, um, that the requested use is allowed or allowed by special permit in the district. Um, as we address, this is an, exist, uh, an extension of an existing nonconformity, which is allowed under 813B. Um, the requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience or welfare. Um, this allows an, an expanded use of the existing uh, dwelling, uh, more in keeping with the the changed needs of the existing homeowners. Um, the requested use will not create undue traffic congestion nor impair pedestrian safety. There will be no impact to either. Requested use will not overload any public systems. There will be no change. Requested use will not impair the character or integrity of the neighborhood. Um, as the applicants and as their neighbor has stated, this is a pretty minor adjustment um, to an existing structure, not uh, not causing any great change. Um, I did take a look at the uh, residential design guidelines uh, for this type of uh, area and the recommendation that the additions be you know maintained on the rear side of the house um, is, a, is a part of that and that would certainly be so the the visual impact from the street will be uh, negligible at most. Um, the requested use will not be detrimental to public health or welfare. There will be no impact on either. And the requested use will not cause an, ex an excess of use detrimental to the neighborhood. And that would not occur either. Um, are there any questions or comments from the board in regards to those findings? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Just as a gloss, um, when it comes to transportation, uh, making minor changes of this kind in order to avoid having to commute is both good for the applicant and it's good for the transportation system as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so were the board to 
vote to approve this application this evening. Uh, there are three standard conditions that would be included. Uh, the first is the plans and specifications approved by the board for the special permit should be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. Be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Number two is the building inspector is hereby notified that they're to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time they determine that violations are present. The building inspector shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under the provisions of chapter 40, section 21D of the Massachusetts general laws and institute non-criminal complaints. If necessary, the building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. And standard condition number three is the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to the special permit grant. Um, are there any additional conditions which um, members of the board would want to include? I will say the only part of this I'm a little concerned about is there are some discrepancies in the drawings, um, which are more representational than the the content. Um, you know, as Mr. Moore had pointed out, the the aerial view was indicating the, you know, the uh, not where the house is, um, and there are some errors on the elevations. But the sort of the the main portion of the project that the porch is being enclosed on the upper level, um, and the location of the the roof line, um, those are represented correctly as is the, for the framing plan. So as long as the board is um, okay with those, um, we can proceed. If the board feels that we need it, that those drawings should be revised before a permit is issued, we can also request that. And the only reason I really bring it up is because our standard condition number one says that these are the plans that are going to be submitted to the building inspector. And that there should be no deviation. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Riccadelli. I, I, I feel pretty, even with the limited scope of what's being asked, I feel pretty comfortable with what they submitted. But okay. what like to hear if other people disagree. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hanlon, I, I I agree with Mr. Riccardelli in this case. It's, but I do, I do think it's important for us to be. This is a problem we need to work on, as we discussed last time. I, it's 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 not okay for people to be thinking to themselves, "My golly, I have a little project. I don't I don't really need to invest in pr producing the right papers or making sure that they're right." And eventually, I think that we, we, I don't think that we need to get strict in this case, but I, I do think the message should go out within the community. Maybe this should be addressed primar primarily, primarily to Mr. Adam, but uh, in general, I think that it, it should be clear that, that uh, it does matter to us to get accurate papers and it may and it may very well matter to the applicant if we ever make a mistake and approve something and it turns out that the drawing isn't right and then you're stuck at the building permit nobody is going to think that's a, a great idea so with a little bit of job boning i do think it's important for us to tighten up on this and for the people who deal with us to tighten up on it and this seems so de minimis that i don't really want to be uh too much of a hard ass here, but I do think that it's in something that we need to be serious about. Mr. Chair, another minor yeah. one, maybe. I'm, um, I noticed that the existing landscaped open space or um, the percentage of GS GFA has grown up. Uh, there's no is, am I missing something there? Um, it's just probably a mistake there, right? Um, it's on page yeah. three of the special permit application or page, yeah, page three. Right. Or maybe three, page three. Um, sorry. Yeah, the, the very top one where existing landscape open space percentage is 90.58 proposed is 
shouldn't affect mm. us in it. Minor. Yeah, I'm I think mine printed with bigger line spacing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that the case? I see. Oh. Uh, yours existing maximum. Uh, maximum. I think it's just. Oh, here looks, we go. Wait. Looks like a, a typo there. Yeah. yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, not yeah. while we're at open space, I, I mm -hmm. the usable open space, we one document that we almost always have that we don't have is a plot plan here. Right. And I would be astonished from looking at the property from the front, which I did the other day, if in fact there was any usable open space. Maybe there's more in the back there than I think. Uh, but I'm not sure that there's space there for the 25 foot square. And uh, I, the chair always has got more insight than I do onto this, but I wonder if that's an issue. I, I don't think it's really an issue. This is really right. just a matter of zero to going to a greater degree of zero, and it's all within the building footprint. So it's not really a, a, a substantive problem, but uh, I'm not sure that the application is correct on that point. If I may, we may have used that before, right, Mr. Hanlon, um, through the chair. If I may ask the question yeah. is, the, the open deck being enclosed sometimes does affect the open space calculations. If used in the calculations, right? Not yeah, contiguous I, part, but. Yeah, it could do that. I'm just thinking to the, I mean, it, there is an increase in there is an increase in the denominator here that uh, the gross floor area is ninety square feet higher than it otherwise would be. The question I have is to do with the numerator. Uh, I don't have that in front of me, but there's like a couple of thousand square feet of usable open space claimed, and it would be unusual to have that much here but it but it, but it may be i just we don't we don't have the plot plan so we can't check to see how much of the usable open how much usable open space there is given the fact that it all has to have a minimum dimension of 25 feet no it, there, it may be enough i just don't know so i was going to recommend two additional conditions um the first was that the board acknowledges that there are certain circum certain inconsistencies in the provided plans. The board approves the application based on the representations on sheets A103, A104, and the structural drawings. Um, so just to clarify for the board, let me go back and share this again. So this is A103, so this shows the enclosed porch on the upper level. Um, A104 shows it being enclosed and shows the windows and coming up on the roof. And then the structural notes, the structural plans. Um, so I think that would sort of address some of the concerns I had about some of the other portions of the set. So this just sort of limits that. And then the other condition, um, we just say where the application does not provide sufficient information to determine the status of the usable open space. Uh, in this case, the board is satisfied with the existing condition being maintained. So we thereby acknowledge that we don't know what the status of the usable open space, but that we're comfortable yeah. with proceeding anyways. Oh, don't sell yourself short, Mr. Coates. I truly believe that you can. Every year at Barton McGowan, students will be unstuck. Anybody have any concern about those two conditions or have any additional conditions? Yeah. And then what the board has before it is a 
the application is a special permit under 813B uh, with three standard conditions and two additional conditions. Uh, may I have a motion? Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I move that the application be approved subject to the three standard conditions and the two additional conditions which the chair just read into the record. Second. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Dupont. So this is a vote of the a roll call vote of the board to approve the special permit for 54 Mary Street, unit number two, with the five previously read conditions. Um, as put forward by Mr. Hanlon, seconded by Mr. DuPont. So are there any questions about what we're voting on? Seeing none, uh, roll call vote. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. The special permit is approved. Thank, thank you, you all so very, much. Much. Thank you very much. And thank you for your patience this evening. Is it time for scotch? Yes, <laughs> very much. But you should share some with Miss Brown. <laughs> Absolutely will. We're deeply thankful for her. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Colleen, do we have anything on the docket for December 12th? Colleen, you there? If so, you're on mute. Sorry, I thought I touched the thing. Um, we have two that are in process, but um, neither one of them will be ready. Okay. I, can't, I have to send out. Um, so I told them both they'd have to do the January 9th meeting. Excellent. All right. So then we do not have a meeting on the 12th of December, because we don't have any business unless there's any business anybody want, feels we need to bring. Um, so, and we're not meeting on December 26th. So then our next meeting would be Tuesday, January 9th with the the two cases that okay. Colleen just mentioned. Um, and in addition, we now have the continuation uh, again of 212 Pleasant Street. Um, and then just, uh, at the at the last meeting, the board did discuss um, some issues about the some of the documentation. Um, I know we haven't really looked into it too much. I've been kind of busy, but uh, December will give us some time to think about those a little bit more and get some stuff into place. So we can work on that offline. Um, so with that, I would th th there's nothing else. We're ready to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Before you move to adjourn, could I uh, make a comment, Mr. Moore? Please, sir. Well, you say now we have, you know, now we've got some time in December to get some stuff done. And I'm thinking, yeah, there's nothing going on in December. I, I, I'm not sure. Um, I, uh, for, uh, first, I want to make just a request, which is uh, something I spoke to you about uh, at town meeting. I'm wondering if it might be possible when um, putting more reference material into the cover sheets and into the, the, the dockets, if there could be dates on them somehow that are more clear. I know that when you title something, you have to title it what the date, what the title is of the document and date is included mm -hmm. often and often not. And the reason being that when something continues, it's really important to me to know what documents are new, particularly mm -hmm. in the case O like 212 Pleasant Street. Um, that would be helpful if there were okay. some dates always there. Um, that's just a personal request. And, and the, the second thing I want to say is, you know, as we move towards the end of the year, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to be part of the meeting on the uh, 12th, is that I just want to recognize to you folks, again, publicly, that, you know, the amount of time and commitment and professionalism that you all show on a regular basis on this board, the preparation, the knowledge of the regulation, the dealing with the various tempers and timbers of, of the inputs that we hear, particularly, I mean, an obvious case is 212 Pleasant Street, um, just is, it's above and beyond the call. And, and really, of all the boards that I get exposed to, and I work with a number of them now, um, you folks are, are by far the most sort of professional, organized, and 
keeping what could be issues that get very emotional and often property rights that people feel very strongly about, keeping that at a reasonable level, the K about, I think it was brilliant how you've worked out 212 to make a continuance happen for them to have one last chance to make it work. I just want to recognize that, that I continue to be so impressed by you guys. So thank you for everything you do for the time. Oh, thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Thank you. Very appreciative. Well, I would like to thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. I would especially like to thank Colleen Ralston and Mike Cunningham for their assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's recording the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of the proceedings. It is our understanding the recording made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Second. Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Vote of the board to adjourn. Mr. DuPont. Happy holidays. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Mr. Hanlon. Hi. <laughs> Mr. Holly. Hi. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. The chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Happy Thanks holidays. again to the Happy board holidays. for the kind words. Me too. Happy holidays to all. Everyone. Thank you. Happy holidays. <laughs> bye. Bye bye, everybody. Bye.